Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing a bridal shoot, uh, groom portraits, and a first look here at the gorgeous venue in Mission, Texas, Alyssa's Acres. So you're gonna be following me today and you're gonna see how I run through these shoots. If you wanna see more videos like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I got more content coming your way. All right, we're gonna start this wedding day off with the bridal shoot portion of the wedding. And I'm shooting on the Sony a7 III with the Sigma Art Series 24 to 70 on one body. And I've got the 85 millimeter 1.8 Sony FE lens on another body. After the bridal shoot, we're gonna to go to quick groom portraits, the first look and then the couple session. And a huge shout out to my buddy, Steven Uceda, who helped me record the behind the scenes of today's wedding. Uh, his Instagram will be linked down below. All right, so this is a common scenario that you'll be seeing in your wedding days, which is a small room with a window and uh, two curtains on each side. And as you can see, we uh, move the furniture out of the way to make some room. And one of the mistakes that I used to make as a beginner was I would just leave everything as is and I would have modify the room. But nowadays I move everything to try to fit the scene and make the scene as clean as possible. So on some wedding days, this is probably the only time that you're actually gonna get to photograph the bride early in the morning uh, indoors with a window light. So take advantage of it. And as you see from just this one little setup, we're gonna get multiple poses and multiple photos just from this one single setup. And the reason I'm using the 24 to 70 is to get that 24 millimeter focal length that gives you that wide angle view. I feel like a 35 millimeter in this type of scenario might be too tight. And then you'll notice my sister here is helping me out today with a reflector that I've modified. I got this idea from Pajurzo, which is to cut a hole in the middle. And that way we can shoot through this instead of buying that Westcott uh, shoot through reflector that costs like triple the price of one of these little five in one reflectors. Um, and it just adds a little bit of contrast to, to the photo that pushes on a little bit of light onto the face. That way, when you actually go to edit the photo, uh, the face is not all washed out. So here I just decided to, uh, open up the window and add a little bit more light since we're going to change the pose around and we can have that window light hitting her from the side. And the way I instruct my brides to pose is actually really not too critical or complicated. Uh, it's usually just feet together and then we drag one knee across the other. Uh, and that creates a really nice shape and curve. And especially with the dress that Alida was wearing today, um, it really makes a nice shape and gives her a nice curve, um, as you can see in the photo here. And as you're seeing, we're not really moving locations. We're staying in the same spot and we're just changing the poses around. Um, and this gives us this really nice high key look and we can also frame the bride with the curtains and this type of scenario or setup is especially useful if brides have these big poofy dresses that are hard to move around in. Uh, you can just put them in one spot and then you move around them and you shoot uh, with that window light. And one of my favorite poses is to have the bride uh, facing towards the window, uh, hands behind her back, and then just holding the bouquet, looking off to the side. And as you can see, it creates a really nice silhouette. You can see the curve of the dress and the tail and the train going down. It just really looks really nice. And then you can also frame with the curtains. So you're just creating this natural frame. And again, we haven't moved locations. We're in the same spot. And then here I'm just uh, grabbing some detail shots, the bouquet, and as well as the veil. And so we were able to get a lot of shots from just this one little setup with in front of a window light. And again, this is a really common thing that you're going to see a cramped hotel room with just some curtains. These type of situations usually occur in the morning. So your window light is your best friend in this type of scenario. So now we can move to like a seated pose and I've closed off most of the curtains and I've turned on that lamp in the background. And while most of my weddings are like a bright and airy type of look, I do like to throw in occasionally some off camera flash and make the portraits real dramatic. 
So I'm using the Mac box and I added a half CTO gel uh, to match that tungsten bulb that's in the background to kind of like motivate the light that's coming from that bulb. And the rule of thumb with this is that if your ambient light is predominantly tungsten, then you're going to want to modify your flash with a CTO gel. Now, if your light is mostly the window light and blue and you just want to add a flash, then you don't need to use a gel because your daylight, your flashes are usually daylight balanced. Uh, that way you don't have any mixing of light. Now, this is a pose I only recommend doing if the bride has a dress that is not uh, poofy or, or hard to move in uh, because getting into type of, this type of pose might take all day. Uh, so I made sure and I checked with Aliza to make sure that she would be comfortable getting on the bed. And I'm kind of glad we did this pose because, uh, as you can tell, these are probably one of my more favorite uh, photos of Aliza. Uh, really candid looking and she just she just looks really comfortable there. Maybe because she was ready to take a nap on the bed or something, who knows. But she looked really comfortable. All right, so then we're just gonna snap some really quick shots of the groom, Sergio. Um, nothing really complicated, uh, just s simple stuff, looking at the camera, fixing your tie, fixing your watch, um, nothing too crazy here. Um, most of my wedding days, I really snap the groom pretty quickly because uh, most people just wanna see the bride anyway, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, we still do some photos here and um, you know, we make the groom look good too. So I still stayed on my 24 to 70 and actually handed a 7200 to my sister. And the reason I still use zoom lens for these first looks is because they're kind of unpredictable. Uh, people react differently. Some people cry. Some people are laughing and or just awkwardly staring at each other. And so that's why I still use the zoom lens because of the unpredictability. But as soon as we go into the couple portraits, I'll be on a 35 and an 85 combo, which is my favorite thing to do. And looking back at the video, um, I, the only thing I wish I had changed about this was if I was just a little bit further away. I felt like I was too in the action and I didn't let him have a moment. Um, so that's probably something I uh, will take a mental note of for future first looks. But either way, we still got some great shots. And one of the things that I want you guys to remember is that in any movie that you've ever watched, there's always a wide, a medium, and a tight shot. And so every time you're shooting a wedding, I always want you to remember, do wide, medium, tight, wide, medium, tight, wide, medium, tight. Did I get the tight shot, the details? Did I get the medium shots? And did I get the wide shots? All right, so this is the first pose that I open with, which is just them holding each other, looking straight into the camera. Uh, arguably, this is the most important couple photo of the entire session because that's the stuff that the grandparents are going to ask for or mom and dad are going to ask for. So after that pose, then we usually do like the candid type of stuff, which is having them walking, uh, walking to our little like spot where we're going to take photos and try to get candidates of them while we are walking to our destination. One of the things that I feel like has helped my images a lot is to uh, worry about your composition first and then just have like a set list of poses that you're really comfortable doing um, and then put your couples into them. And then you can just do the traditional look into the camera and smile. But then after that, I give my couples cues as to what to do. And so in this case, I told Sergio to whisper something dirty into Alita's ear. And as you can see the reaction that we got, they laugh and that's a candid photo right there. And I didn't say, hey guys, just look into the camera and laugh. No, I give them something to do. Um, so they forget that they're having the photo taken. Um, and that gives you a more candid and authentic moment. And that's what I find has really, really helped out my images. Same thing here, as you can see, I'm gonna have them look at the camera and smile, and then I'm gonna tell them like a stupid joke about like, I don't know, some stupid pun that it's like a dad joke. But as you can see here, they're laughing and it's a candid moment. Unfortunately, I didn't have a behind the scenes of the ceremony uh, due to coronavirus. Um, this wedding was a very last minute thing. We had all these plans, it was gonna be a huge wedding, uh, but we had to condense it down just to immediate family. Um, you know, but we got it done. We we did our job. And finally, a huge thank you to Sergio and Alida for allowing me to record the behind the scenes of their wedding. It is greatly appreciated. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you want to see more content like this. Hit the subscribe button, the bell notification so you can see more videos. So next week, we're going to have an engagement session behind the scenes. And there's going to be a lot of tips on how to get your couples to look candid. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.